Good day everyone! Welcome to Module 1 Lesson 2 entitled Nature of Communication. Once again, I'm Ma'am Honey and I'm here to provide you a better understanding of the characteristics and features of communication. Different individuals define communication in different ways, depending on how they feel about it. Since every person understands the world differently based on their own point of view, this may also impact how they give meaning to communication. How about you? What comes to your mind when you hear the word communication? You can write your answers in the comment section below. To truly define communication in a way that all people understand, we must define all the things that make up affect and affect communication. We could spend all day defining the word and still it would never be enough since communication is very broad in its sense. Communication can broadly be defined as the exchange of ideas, messages, and information between two or more persons. But we all know that communication is not just the mere transfer of messages from one person to another. It goes beyond that for there should be mutual understanding between the persons involved. So what is communication? Considering the etymological definition or origin of the word, it was derived from the Latin word communicare, which means to share, impart, exchange, transmit, or to make common. This emphasizes the importance of sharing common information, ideas, and messages. It is not merely issuing orders and instructions. Communication happens in our daily conversations with the people around us. However, it is important to note that unless a common understanding results from the transmission of information, there is no communication. Various definitions for the word were given by communication experts. This is mainly because there had been lots of theories that have been proposed to describe, predict, and understand the behaviors and phenomena of which communication exists. For the purpose of establishing a common definition, we will utilize Stephen McCormick's definition from his book entitled Interpersonal Communication in You, where he defined communication as a process of sharing and conveying messages or information from one person to another within and across channels, context, media, and cultures. The definition he provided encompasses a lot of aspects that communication touches, which is actually a good way to define the word. Nature of Communication As we all know, human communication is vital for survival. And it is one thing in life that we cannot avoid to do. For you to better understand communication, let's take a closer look on its features and characteristics. Communication is a process. Communication is a process in which a source or speaker sends and encodes a message through a channel to a destination or receiver. The receiver decodes the message in order to give an appropriate feedback. It is an evolutionary process that develops and grows. For example, communication does not start and stop with each conversation. How we end a previous conversation will influence how we begin the next conversation when we meet the same person. This communication process is dynamic or always changing as it occurs within a context which constantly varies depending on so many factors like the people involved, the place, the channels used, and the situation. It is a complex process too. By complex process, it means one message may be interpreted in many ways by different people. Communication occurs between two or more people. Communication occurs between two or more people acting as the speaker or the receiver of the message. It should involve an interaction which can be in the form of a phone conversation, a face-to-face -face interaction, a group discussion, 
and even a letter correspondence. It is a two-way process of reaching mutual understanding in which participants do not only exchange information but also create and share meaning. In general, communication is a means of connecting people or places. Communication can be verbal or non-verbal or both at the same time. Communication can be expressed through written or spoken words or actions. Communication is not all about sending or receiving facts in words. It also involves ideas and emotions that are expressed through gestures, bodily actions, facial expression, eye behavior, and many more. Generally, communication takes place with a combination of verbal and non-verbal elements as one kind complements the other. For example, a man uses both verbal and non-verbal communication when he winks at a lady and at the same time greets her and offers her a drink. The lady then smirks, which is a gesture of disgust or dislike. Even without the use of words, the lady's action can be understood as an indication of her disapproval towards the man. Communication is inevitable. Inevitability means communication is everywhere. We cannot avoid it. The truth is, we are communicating constantly because even when we do not want to communicate, we are still communicating. Isn't that ironic? Yes, we are sending a message by the way we smile or frown, sit or move, or by the way we walk or dress up ourselves and by our actions. And even when you are sleeping in class, you are communicating that you are either bored or sick or whatever your reasons be. Communication is irreversible. Though communication is constantly changing and evolving, we can argue that it is irreversible. But once it occurs, we cannot take it back or undo communication. If you are engaged in an argument with your significant other, and says something harsh or cruel, the damage is done. You can later be sorry for what you have said, but once the damage has already been done, it can never be undone. Irreversibility happens the very minute you click the OK button for a comment or post on your social media, and that it would be too late to take it back when a lot of people have already reacted and commented on it. This characteristic of communication implies that as senders of message, we must be very careful and choose the appropriate words to say before saying them. Communication is unrepeatable. We may say the same thing over and over again, but the effect of what we said the second or third or fourth time will not be the same as the first time we said it. Even if we intend to say the same thing again, which is possible, but the idea here is, the outer world has changed by the second utterance. Our listeners may be different, our mood may be different, or our relationship might be in a different place. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. There is a saying, you can't step in the same river twice. This means you can never repeat the same message in the exact same way. An example for this is when you're at home and you hear your mother rant about your laziness. The first time you heard it, your reaction would have been bad. You probably cried or stayed in your room the whole day. But when you heard it the second time or the third, there is that different effect. You probably wouldn't react to it at all or perhaps just laugh it out. Communication is one of the things in this world that cannot be fitted into one perfect box where everything has an explanation. However, when communication is summarized, it all comes down to these characteristics or features which makes it a lot easier to understand.